many people have gut problems and not everyone with gut problems has symptoms and this includes many who have a leaky gut. According to the triad of autoimmunity, a leaky gut is one of the three necessary components for autoimmunity to develop. But how can you determine if you have a leaky gut? In this video, I'll discuss three different leaky gut tests, including the one I feel is the best option. Before I begin, I just want to remind you that the main reason I put together these videos is to help people with different types of autoimmune conditions and other health issues better understand their test results so that they can find or remove their triggers, correct any underlying imbalances, and feel great again. First, let's discuss some basics about leaky gut testing. And to learn more about leaky gut syndrome and how it relates to autoimmunity, please watch my previous video and I'll include a link in the description below. It's important to understand that most conventional medical doctors don't do any leaky gut testing and even most gastroenterologists don't test for a leaky gut. So if you want a leaky gut test, you probably will have to go through a natural healthcare practitioner. But before you purchase any type of testing for a leaky gut, you'll want to watch the rest of this video. As I mentioned in the beginning of this video, I'll be focusing on three main types of testing for a leaky gut. The first test I'm going to discuss is the lactulose mannitol test, which is a urine test that requires someone to swallow a sugary solution of lactulose mannitol. Lactulose is a larger molecule and therefore it's poorly absorbed in someone who has a healthy gut. As a result, if someone who does this test has high levels of lactulose in the urine, then this usually indicates that they have an increase in intestinal permeability. One of the benefits of this test is that it's easy to do and is convenient, and since it's a urine test, it's non-invasive as well. It's also not too expensive, at least not when compared with many other tests, such as a comprehensive stool panel. However, a downside of the lactulose mannitol test is that a negative result does not rule out a leaky gut. So here we see the lactulose mannitol test. And just a reminder, an increase in intestinal permeability is synonymous with a leaky gut. So this actually represents a normal lactulose mannitol test. And the main value you want to pay attention to is a lactulose percent recovery. And so ideally you want it in the green, but yellow is acceptable. If it was in the red, it would be elevated. And this person would have an increase in intestinal permeability, which would mean that they have a leaky gut. The next test I'd like to discuss is the array number two from Cyrex Labs which is also known as the intestinal antigenic permeability screen. So this is a blood test and it measures a few markers associated with the leaky gut, including actomyosin, occludin zinulin, and lipopolysaccharides, also known as LPS. And I'll show an example of this test shortly. I really do like Cyrex Labs as they are a good company with good reproducibility of their tests, which of course is important with any lab. One of the main downsides of this test is that you need to visit a lab that works with Cyrex Labs although this usually isn't too big of a deal. Another downside is that if someone has depressed immunoglobulins, then this can cause a false negative result. However, you can always get the serum immunoglobulins tested before doing the array number two, and you can do this at most regular labs, including LabCorp and Quest Diagnostics, and I'll include a link to this type of test in the description below. So here we see an actual report of the array two or again, the intestinal antigenic permeability screen. And so we could see, again, there's three different markers. There's actomyosin IgA. And then for these other two, occludin zinulin and lipopolysaccharides, they test the IgG, IgA, IgM marker for each of these. And in this case, we see that two of these values are clearly elevated. And pretty much all you need is one of these values to be elevated to confirm the presence of a leaky gut. And probably the more important ones are the occludin zonulin and the actomyosin. So lipopolysaccharides are from gram-negative bacteria. And usually when you see this on the test, it's indicative of leaky gut. But in some cases, maybe not correlated with the leaky gut. doesn't always confirm a leaky gut. So if I just see LPS positive, I still will assume the person has a leaky gut. But definitely if you see occludin zonulin or actomyosin positive, then person without question has a leaky gut. And even though we don't have any equivocal readings here, if it is equivocal with Cyrex labs, anything that's equivocal is one standard deviation out of range. Whereas if it's clearly out of range, then it's two standard deviations out of range. And so 
even if something was equivocal and nothing was out of range here, you would still want to treat the person for a leaky gut, try to find the cause of the leaky gut. A downside of all these tests, it doesn't tell you what is causing a leaky gut. It's just telling you that you have a leaky gut. And that's why I don't do a lot of these testing is because it's not telling us what's causing a leaky gut in this case. And another thing to mention is even though actomycin is within range here, in the past when I used to do this test more frequently, I used to get on the phone with Cyrix Labs and talk about this test, especially when I first started doing this test because I wasn't familiar with this test. And they would tell me that even though the range for actomycin is between zero and 20, anything over 10, they would still suspect a leaky gut. And usually the most common cause of elevated actomycin is exposure to gluten. And once again, even though this is an elevated, if both of these were negative, even though this is in range, they would tell me, or at least in the past, they would tell me to still support the gut and make sure that the person is avoiding gluten. So here we see another intestinal antigenic permeability screen. And so here, here's a good example where we don't see anything out of range, but we see three markers that are equivocal. And we see one of these is associated with occlude and zonulin. These other two are associated with the lipopolysaccharides. And so actomycin here, you could see less than 10. So as I mentioned, with looking at the other report, since that was above 10, even though it was within the range, they still would consider that to be let's say greater than optimal out of the functional range. But here that's within range, but because these three are equivocal, or even if one was equivocal, especially if it was a clued and zonulin, then you would want to treat the person for a leaky gut. And as I mentioned, when looking at the other report, when treating for a leaky gut, you want to find out the cause of the leaky gut. And I spoke about this in the previous video when I discussed the relationship between a leaky gut and autoimmunity. Let's go ahead and discuss the third and final leaky gut marker, which is zonulin. So this could be measured in the blood or the stool, and it's a protein that plays an important role in the opening of small intestine tight junctions. So increased zonulin is associated with an increase in intestinal permeability, which is the medical term for a leaky gut. So zonulin is a marker of gut wall integrity, and when the gut barrier is compromised, this can make someone more vulnerable to food antigens, infections, and certain chemicals. And one of the benefits is that zonulin is easy to test for if someone is already doing a comprehensive stool panel, as it is an add-on with certain labs. But the downside is that false negative results are common. And because it's also an expensive add-on, I usually don't recommend adding it to a stool panel. But a greater reason is not the price, but again, just because false negatives are common. So here we see zonulin as part of a comprehensive stool panel. And here we see it's, it's clearly negative. If it was either yellow or especially in the, the pink or red here, then it would be elevated greater than 80 here, 22.5. And again, not something I commonly recommend. In this case, either this person got it from another practitioner or in some cases they'll ask me to add it. And if they ask me my opinion, should they add it, I usually will say no. But if someone insists on adding it to a comprehensive stool panel, I don't have a problem doing that. But again, just because this is negative does not mean this person does not have a leaky gut. On the other hand, if this was elevated or even if it was in a yellow, then I would suspect that the person would have a leaky gut. So what's the best test for a leaky gut? Although I don't frequently recommend leaky gut testing to my patients, I have used all three of these tests. And if someone wants a test for a leaky gut, I would recommend the array number two from Cyrix Labs. Even though false negatives are a possibility with any of these three tests, if someone has normal immunoglobulins, then the chance of a false negative with the array number two is low. I also like the fact that Cyrix Labs runs through all their tests a second time to make sure the results are reproducible. The next question is, should you even bother to test for a leaky gut? As I just mentioned, I don't frequently recommend leaky gut testing to my patients. Although it's usually best to test rather than guess, the truth is that most people can't afford to test for everything. And since a leaky gut is so common in those with autoimmune conditions, I usually just assume that my patients have a leaky gut. Plus, we also need to keep in mind that even if someone does one of these tests and it comes out positive for a leaky gut, it does not tell us what the cause of the leaky gut is. 
That being said, some people like to get a baseline reading, and if they test positive for a leaky gut, they will focus on removing the potential leaky gut triggers, and some will then go ahead and retest the leaky gut test in the future to see if their gut has been healed. One of the most common causes of a leaky gut is gut infections. And if you want to learn more about a test that determines if you have one or more gut infections, you'll probably want to check out my GI map overview video. If you liked this video, please click on the like button below. And if you have any questions on leaky gut testing, please let me know in the comments below.